In 2008, I got an email from Jay-Z's team asking if he could wear my clothing brand for his American tour. However, this moment turned into a nightmare. Stay tuned and I'll explain why. Let's go, Rush! I recently gave a motivational talk here in Melbourne to a group of creatives where I shared this story about Jay-Z wearing my clothing brand. I was really nervous before giving this talk, but it reminded me the importance of telling these type of stories to help inspire others. I come from Canberra, which is a small city in Australia, humble beginnings, single mum, but I had big dreams and a lot of passion. Hopefully this story can motivate you to pursue that one idea you've always wanted to create. So in 2007, I came home to Canberra after spending 12 months in the US where I met a lot of rappers and celebrities. My friend Anthony suggested that I capitalize on being around all these high profile people by starting a clothing brand. So then, Spader Clothing was born. It was myself and two others that created this monster, Anthony and John. Spader was a streetwear brand that went on to be sold around the world. I did photo shoots in Los Angeles, Rio de Janeiro, and of course, my hometown of Canberra. The brand was best known for its t-shirts and high quality hoodies. It was worn by Patty Mills, Tiger, Ruby Rose, the New Zealand rugby team, models and DJs from all over the world. I even created a Spada hip hop theme song featuring artists from Detroit, Sydney and Auckland. So fly Sydney to end while nobody goes harder than the Spaders. However, the biggest opportunity for my clothing brand came at the very start of the journey. In 2008, Jay-Z was preparing for a tour and Spader created a MySpace page. Yes, the good old days. Spader was in its early stages. The MySpace page had no more than 200 followers and literally just five photos showcasing the clothing. One of the photos was a 16 year old kid covered in tattoos called Tiger. I developed a strong relationship with Tiger at this time as I just finished working on a mixtape with him. But this is a story for another video. So one morning I woke up and checked the Spader MySpace page and there was a message from a lady saying that she was working with Jay-Z and that they love the clothing. And I was like, no way. She didn't give me much information, but she said the theme was black and white for the tour and that Jay liked wearing unreleased clothing. It also helped that Jay-Z was endorsing Ace of Spades champagne, so the branding linked up. Anyway, I read the message and just assumed it was a joke. You know, someone just trying to get some free gear. So a few days passed and I decided to research into who this person was. Turns out, she was legit. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this episode about my old clothing brand. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything that you have. And I just wanna give a big shout out to everyone that's been supporting the channel this year. Much love, and if you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. I was then put in touch with Jay-Z stylist, June Ambrose. She told me, look, I need the clothes delivered to New York in three weeks time for the US tour. However, this is where the problem started. You won't believe it, but we didn't have any clothing. At this stage, we only had samples that were full of mistakes made from low quality materials in China. Spader was brand new. The three of us literally had no idea what we were doing or how to operate a clothing brand. At that point in time, there weren't any local screen printing companies that could make t-shirts or hoodies at a high enough standard. So we made a bunch of calls and fortunately, we found a guy that had some connections in China who could get the job done. But it was gonna take six to eight weeks to get 10 t-shirts and three hoodies delivered to New York. I was freaking out. Had the opportunity to get our clothes worn by a hip hop icon slip through our fingers. I didn't want to come across unprofessional and tell Jay-Z stylist the reality of what our situation was. So I got in touch with June Ambrose explaining there would be a slight delay. She replied with, no problems at all. Jay-Z has a European tour coming up and can wear it on stage then. What you can see here are the designs we mocked up for Jay-Z's European tour. This is what we sent to the factory in China so they could base the prints off. It was a really nerve wracking time as we'd never dealt with this manufacturer before and had no idea how good the quality would be. 
The photos started coming in from our contact and it was a big relief to see the progress of our designs coming together. Once it was all finished, the gear was shipped from China directly to June Ambrose in New York. Jay-Z finally got the gear and wore it on his European tour in 2008. To be based in a small city of Australia, still living with my mum and having one of the biggest names in hip hop wearing our clothes was the most surreal feeling. But the story doesn't finish there. You know we had to have one more drama. A few months after the European tour, June Ambrose got in touch with me again, saying that Jay-Z had a music video coming up in two weeks. She couldn't give me many details, apart from the fact that it was an army theme video. It was deja vu all over again. Unfortunately, this time, there was no way that we could meet this deadline. Fast forward one to two months, guess what music video was released? Jay-Z, We Run This Town, featuring Rihanna and Kanye West. Oh man, I couldn't believe it, but this story does have a happy ending. I formed a long-term relationship with Jay-Z stylist and we ended up sending him Spader gear for another one or two years. What this experience has taught me is that anything is possible no matter where you're located in the world. Even if you have 200 followers on your social media, you never know who is looking at your work.